record. All right. So let's start all over again from the question, okay? Um, so where we are, we are here. So um, sorry for the interruption. Uh, so we continue with the type one error, type two error, okay? Um, we said the result of H0 either true or false. Any statement, the result either true or false. And your decision, okay? What can you do with this H0? You can reject H0. You can reject H0 or you do not reject H0. We also call fail to reject. Let's see, use play English. Do not reject H0. This is your decision. You don't have third choice. You either reject or you do not reject H0. Remember you are targeting H0, not H1, okay? All right, so now let's look at this picture here. When H0 is true, but you reject H0, you are making mistake. That mistake is type one error. Okay. When H0 is false, you reject something that is false. You did correct thing, you are correct. And now let's look at this combination. When H0 is true, you do not reject H0. That's true, that you did correct. Something is true, you do not reject, okay? This one here, when H0 is false, you do not reject H0. You are making mistake again. That mistake is type two error. Okay, so we review the basic concept of type one error, type two error. So in summary, type one error is you reject something that is true. Type two error is you do not reject something that is a false. So now let's look at this one here. The statement said, uh, the quest, this is the question, identify type one error. Identify type one error. So let's read the statement. Okay, remember type one error, you reject something that is true. So let's read the statement. The percentage of household with more than one pound is less than 65%. This statement is for, based on this statement, what can you write down? What is H0? What is H1? By the way, when you have question about type one error, type two error, it is strongly, strongly suggest you write down H0 and H1. Because you see here, H0, this type one error, type two error, targeting H0. There is no mention H1 here, okay? So you write down H0, H1. So you see keyword less than 65%, okay? Um, so the by, this is hypothesis test about pop, uh, population proportion, okay? So you may need to use, um, this is the population proportion is on the, Next slide. Uh, we use pi represent population proportion. Okay, so population proportion less than 65%. That is H1 because it is less than. Remember, we re reviewed when you have less than, less than, you must use H1. Okay. So pi less than 65% and H0 is pi 
greater equal to 65%. Okay. So type 1 error said, population greater equal to 65%, but you said not, not greater equal to 65%. That is type 1 error. And then you look at A, B, C, D. So B is the correct because you reject the null hypothesis that the percentage with more than one pound is equal to, see this greater equal is the same as equal. Some textbook use equal instead of greater equal. Okay. And when the percentage actually, oops, where is it? When the percentage is actually equal to 65%. So that is the type one error. You reject something that is true. Okay. Uh, you need to practice more about type one error and type two error. Okay. So this is this question. And the next question I get for the student is this question here, module two question. Um, a survey of uh, 1,005 tablet owners was conducted in response to a survey question about shopping. 33% tablet owners said they use mobile devices for payment. Okay. 22% uh, said they use such devices to make social media comments about, about their purchase. And 6% said they use such device to retrieve mobile coupons, complete part A and D. They are similar questions, so I will just do A because this is the question one student asked. Question A, construct 99% confidence interval estimate of population proportion pair of a tablet owners who said they use mobile device for payments. Okay. See? 33% of target owners said they use mobile device for payment. Okay, so first step, uh, this is proportion problem. You need to identify what is N. N equal to 1,005, and you need to identify what is X. X is a number of owners who said they use mobile device payment. So X equal to 33% multiply by 1,005, okay, 1,005. Uh, so I'm going to use Excel and uh, yeah, okay. I have this space here. So equals 33%, 0 0.33, multiply by 1,005, uh, 331 331.7, uh, remember, this is sample size problem. You always round up, so 332. Okay. So you have 332, x equal to this. And then you plug in the calculator, use calculator. Okay. I will turn on my calculator. Uh, you press F4 button, interval, F4. And then proportion problem always use Z test, so F1. And after that, uh, make sure data is variable. C level 0 0.99. Okay, you type in 0 0.99. C level. Oh, no, um, F4, F1. Then one sample F4, F1, F1. Okay, and C level is 0 0.99 um, sigma. One sample, no, this is uh, interval there. One proportion. So should be F4 interval, F1 there, and then F3, one proportion. Okay, correct a mistake here. The starting point for calculator, F4, F1, F3, and then C level, you type in 0 0.99, 
uh, x, you type in 332, n, you type in 1005, press e, x, e. Okay. And you will get these two numbers. Okay, so that is uh, this question. So the other question, okay, this question here. Um, this is the question I get from one student <coughs> um, here. According to a newspaper, customers are not set settling for automobiles straight off the production lines. A sample of 192 recent purchases of particular car model yielded a sample mean of 5,427 above the 20,200 base sticker price. Suppose the cost of accessories purchased for all cars of this model has a standard deviation. See the keyword for all cars. Standard deviation is 1450 means this standard deviation is population standard deviation sigma. Okay. And the question asks you calculate 80% confidence interval for the average cost of accessories uh, in this model, okay? Um, so, confidence interval estimate. So, any ideas? <clears throat> How I calculate it is I divide, um, is I subtracted, uh, five, um, five, five, six, one point one, uh, subtracted by five, two, nine, two point nine. Uh -huh. And I got the answer and I divided that by two. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So if you use, um, just want to see my calculation here. And the answer is 31, I'm uh, sorry, uh, 134.1. Okay. Um, so this is a, this number. Um, Eighty percent confidence interval for the average. Um, so if you use a calculator, you can do this. Um, F four. Oops, uh, I'm using my calculator. Um, F four. So this is the. Uh, Maybe this one here, the 95% confidence interval. Uh, population standard deviation is given, uh, C level sigma X bar. Okay, so you still, because population standard deviation is given here, so you would use a starting point F4 button, okay, um, interval, and then F1, Z test, and then F1 again, one sample, okay. And after that, C level, uh, C level is 0 0.8, confidence level, 0 0.8 is the C level, okay. Um, and then sigma, Sigma is given 1450. Okay, so this is sigma 1450 is a sigma and the x bar. Um, what is x bar? x bar in this case is 5427 because the question asks you for the accessories. The average cost for accessories is 5,427, not the base price, okay? So X bar, you type in 5,427, okay? And then sample size N. 
sample size n, you type in 192, and you press enter, uh, you can get uh, these two number, 5292.9 and uh, 5561.1, because it is just nearest cent. Okay, any questions about part A? Calculate 80% confidence interval. Now part B, determine the margin of error in estimating the average cost again for accessories. Okay, so margin of error, um, the formula, what is the margin of error? Margin of error is E. E equal to Z half alpha, Z subscript half alpha, half alpha times sigma divided by square root of n. That is the margin of error, sometimes also called sampling error. Okay. And Z half alpha, when you have 80%, what is Z half alpha? Go back to the picture I showed you. Okay, see, this is the picture I showed you last time. Although we use special percentage, 90%, 95%, 99, when you have 80%, same thing, when you have 80%, when you have 80%, the question is, what is this critical value? What is this critical value? Okay, you use your calculator, F5, F1, F3, okay? F5, no, no, F5, F1, F3, and tail center. Area, you type in 0 0.8, sigma is one, mu is zero, okay? And you should get, this is 1.28, 155, and the other is negative 1.28, 155, okay? So this is Z half alpha, 1.28155, okay? So you get here, where are I? Yeah, here, so 1.28155, that is Z half alpha. And sigma, sigma is given, 1,450, okay. 1,450, okay, 50, divided by square root of n, square root of 192, okay? And you can use Excel to do this, I actually, So this question is, so this is a critical value when you have 80%. So another value we need is standard deviation 1450, okay? And sample size is 192, 192, okay? Once I get this number, formula E, okay? E equal to uh, Z half alpha times Sigma divided by square root of sample size, okay? And I get this uh, margin of error, 134.1, okay? So I'm going to write down this, 134.1 is the margin of error. 100, Point one, okay. So that is a part B, margin of error. Okay. Uh, any questions? All right. This is this question, and this is same question. Uh, last question, and then I open the floor up. This is the last question I get. Okay. Um, Sorry, professor. Yes. Uh, I yeah, I asked uh, earlier uh, about you know, probably going over question 16 in module three, if that's okay. 
Absolutely. This is my last question. This is a cumulative question I promise students to answer. So this is the last question we'll go through. Then I will answer your question. Is that okay? Okay, okay. No. yeah. Thank you. Thank so, this is the question I got from uh, email student. I promise students to answer this question during the Zoom session. Okay, a head librarian at large library asked her assistant for an interval estimate for the mean number of books checked out each day. The assistant provides interval estimate of 740 to 920 books per day. If the head librarian knows that the population standard deviation is 150 books, and she asked her assistant for 95% confidence interval, what is the required uh, sample size? That is the question. Okay, that is the question. And uh, you just need to use the sample size formula. In sample size formula, you need margin of error E, okay? Margin of error E, it is just this number, upper bound minus lower bound divided by two, that is margin of error, okay? So um, that is, uh, once you have this number, so what is that number? Excel. I'm going to use this one here. So 920 minus 740 divided by two is 90. And once you get this number, you plug in sample size formula, okay? Z half alpha, Z half alpha square multiply sigma square divided by E square. Okay, and Z half alpha, when you have 95%, Z half alpha 1.96, okay, square times sigma square. See, sigma is 150. 150 square and divided by E square, 90 square. Okay, and you can figure out the result for this one. Okay, it is 11. Uh, no, I'm not sure. I have to double check the answer. Just quickly run through the Excel. So I'm going to do it here. Um, so it is 1.96 square multiplied by 150 square divided by 90 square. Uh, 10.67, so it is equal to 11. Okay. 10.67, for sample size, always round up 11. So that is uh, the question I collected over the week. But now I'm going to open the uh, question 16 in module three, okay. Uh, I have to, okay. Where is my module? I have my module question here. Yes, this is my module three questions. Um, question. Uh, remember when you do my lab questions, each student, oops, oops have different numbers because the question number will randomly changed, okay? So uh, these numbers may not the same as your question number, but the, uh, the foundations of the question is the same, okay? They just change the numbers. For example, 67 customers, they change to 75 customers, something like that, okay? Uh, so anyone can see this question clearly. Is this the question you ask first? Hello. Yes, 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 yeah. that's the question. Okay, uh, okay, let's go through this question, okay. At a recent meeting, the manager of national, uh, maybe I need to copy this question to one note because I can make a notation. Because I cannot write 
anything on this PDF file. Okay, now I can write down the note. Uh, at, can anyone see the cl clearly the, the questions or I need to increase the font size? Uh, professor? Yes. Uh, apologies. So, so sorry. It's, um, I, I made a mistake. I mixed up a little bit. It's not question 16. It's question 17. I apologize again. No problem. Okay. So I go to question 17. Yeah, because I figured out 16. 16 wasn't the difficult one. It was a little bit, yeah, 17 was a little bit more challenging. Sorry about that. No problem. So this is question 17. Okay, so I'm going to copy this question. And then I will make the font bigger. Right. So let me cut out the long question. CVV. Wow, this is, okay, let's go slowly, yeah, so. Uh, because module three, uh, the due date is this Friday, right? So the due date for module three. N uh, uh, the, sorry, you mean module three on uh, my stacks lab or do you mean module yeah. three on? Module three, my lab. My lab, this question here. So it is due, I believe, May 29th. Okay, May 29th, right? Yeah. Because the due date hasn't passed it yet, uh, I cannot, I can just give you the hint, okay? Um, because it haven't due yet, and this question is marked, okay? Uh, so let's read over the question. The manager of a paint supply store wants to determine whether the mean amount of Paint contained in one gallon cans purchased from nationally known manufacturer is actually one gallon. You know from manufacturer specification that the standard deviation of amount is. So this is population standard deviation. Uh, you select a random sample of 45 cans and the mean amount of the paint per gallon. The mean is this complete part below. Uh, click here, the normal distribution table, okay. Uh, so let's go over part. Is there evidence that the mean amount is different from one uh, use 0 0.05 level of significance? And let mu be population mean, determine what is H0, what is H1? This is easy question, right? So um, how do you write down? Again, return back to the first question. Some students ask, how do I write down H0? How do I write down H1? So you read the statement here. Uh, See, this is the statement. Is there evidence the mean is different from one? Different from one, keyword different. Go back to the simple, this is very, very important at the beginning of this section. See, this represents different, do you agree? This is different means H1, okay? So you start from there, oops. So H1 mu, why do I have mu one, mu two? Oh, H, so I will write down here. What is H1? Different means mu, not equal to one. And when you have H1 is not equal, H0, H0 must be equal. Okay, so that is your H0, H1, 
right? Uh, next, what is the what is the test statistic Z? Okay, test statistic Z formula. Sample mean x bar minus population mean mu divided by population standard deviation over square root of sample size. Okay, so what is sample mean? See, sample mean is 0 0.995. So you type in 0 0.995. That is sample mean. And what is population mean? See here, population mean is zero. Okay, you assume it is zero. Okay, minus zero divided by sigma. Sigma is here, 0 0.006 is standard deviation. 0 0.006 over square root of sample size, n, n is 45. Okay, so you get test statistic. What is this number? I'm going to use Excel to do it. I'm going to delete all these numbers. I don't use those numbers. So I'm going to do this calculation equals 0 0.995 divided by denominator. I use bracket 0 0.006 over square SQRT, square root of 45, closing bracket. Okay, so this test is this correct? 0 0.995 x bar divided 0 0.006 over square root of 45. Why this Z is so big? Hold on, I'll double check the number. One gallon. Standard deviation 0 0.006, 0 0.006, yes. The mean 0 0.995. Can anyone double check what is the result of this number? Square root of 0.995. So oh, I will do another way, 0 0.995. I will do denominator first, different way, 0 0.006 divided by square root, square root of 45. This number is this, and then you uh, Professor, Professor, yeah. it's 1112.44. Uh, uh, sorry, what did you say? Uh, the answer uh, for that uh, equation is 1112.44. One, 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 so I'm doing correct, see? 1112, one, one, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for confirm. Because okay. usually we don't have this. See? 111244, one, four, four. thank you so much for confirm, okay? So I get 1122. One, one, so 1122.44. That is the Z value, okay? So you plug in here. And then what is the final conclusion? This Z value, compare Z value with critical value. What is critical value? See, when you have alpha 0 0.05, critical value. That's why the beginning part is very important. The critical value, see here? See, when you have alpha 0 0.05, critical value 1.96, negative 1.96. Those are the critical value, okay? So you compare critical value with the test statistic. Obviously, critical value is a critical value decided rejection region. So negative 1.6, positive 1.6. Critical value decide rejection region, important concept. Okay, so 
this is rejection region and this is the rejection region. And when your test statistic, this is your test statistic, it must be somewhere here, 1,122. That is your test statistic. Your test statistic is in the rejection region. So you reject H0. So A, B, C, D, where is reject H0? Only A or D correct. Then only one correct, so reject H0. What does mean reject H0? Uh, this said uh, insufficient evidence, the mean, the reject H0. So you have to look at what is H0, see? H0 said mean equal to zero. Uh, hold on, no, not, not equal to zero. Mu one. H0 said mean equal to one. Okay, so you reject H0. When you read, you I'll write down here. You reject H0. When you reject H0, you accept H1 means mu not equal to one. That is the correct conclusion. Mu not equal to one. Okay. Um, so there is a insufficient evidence. Is a, there is sufficient evidence. See, there is a sufficient evidence. Mean is different from one. So this is the correct answer. Is that clear? Yes, yes, Professor. Thank you so much. Actually, that uh, clarified again. Uh, I have to sort of review the beginning because that actually helped a lot with understanding the uh, um, what to do when formulating the Z Z stat formula. So that really yeah. helped. I, I I found a lot of difficulty with trying to figure out what to put in for the mu, and then all I knew was, wow, I just have to assume it is the zero. Yeah, right. Because oh, hold on, no, no, no. That's why. Sorry. That's why we make mistake. Mu is not zero. <laughs> Sorry. Mu is one. I, I made mistake before. I before I run out. Mu is one. So that's oh. why I found this Z value is very, very strange. See, I made mistake. Sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> mu is one. So this is one. We have to recalculate this number. Okay, so I'm going to erase. Mu is one, mu is not zero. So, I never see a Z value that big. <laughs> so, 0 0.995 minus one bracket divided by that. Negative 5.59, double check. Yeah, correct, negative 5.59. Transcendable in double check, negative 5.59. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That makes sense, negative 5.59. I never see the Z values, hundreds of thousands, actually 5.59, okay. So we have to erase this, di oh, this diagram is correct. We have to re-plug in where is Z. Z is negative here, negative 5.59. It is still in the rejection region. Did you see that? Negative 5.59 is still in the rejection region. So we conclude reject. So our conclusion is correct. We did it wrong about the Z value. We subtract, mu is subtract one. I'll make this clear. Mu is one. Okay. All right. So Thank any you, other professor. questions? You are come. Um, I also need to demonstrate how to use SPSS. Um, uh, just few minutes, then we conclude this session. Okay. So SPSS. If you have trouble logging SPSS, you need to con uh, contact. Uh, computer communication services, I showed you the website, or simply go distance at ryerson.ca. Again, the email is distance at ryerson.ca for uh, technology problem, okay? 
so I have my I have a SPSS on my laptop, but it is only good till end of June. Uh, I with my SPSS. Uh, okay, I'm going to open. Um, applications not for you to SPSS right here. Um, right here, March SPSS. Where's my dad? Um, maybe I will go with your version because you, what you do, you go to log in the Ryzen one. So I'm going to go try go from there. Um, oops. So you, I don't remember the website, but what I do, I always go to Google, Ryerson Virtual Lab, then it will give me um, uh, Google. Yeah, and then why the my computer is very slow today. Uh, Ryzen University Virtual Lab Virtual No, I need virtual lab. What for applications? And then you go here, VAPPS, go to this link. And then use your Ryzen credential to log in. Some students have questions about this step. Uh, welcome to Secret Receiver. No one detect this receiver. I agree. Why I need to download just a few moments. We need to download. Anyone successful using SPSS? Wait while we confirm secret receiver was installed. Looks like I have one.
Um, so it even start, then continue, and then continue, continue. I agree. And then install. Um, password. Uh, you may also need to go through similar process. So it is installing. I went through the same process as well. Yeah, you wanted the same process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you receive the instruction set up with your email, get a result, I'm not going to continue. If you receive the instruction, I just click on the installation. So, installation success. So, what? Why did you? Oh, please wait. If you have to go into your applications. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, and it should be there. It took some time for me to download everything too. You you already did this process. I I did process it, but um, in the beginning it wasn't working. So I had to email distance at Ryerson and they said they fixed it. So I have to check if they I so. see. So this is What's my speech receiver, right? Yes, that's it. Before when I use virtual lab, I don't think it's complicated. I just use Ryerson Prudential. Okay, add account, enter your email. Da, 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 da. So Ryerson email, I guess. Could not add account. Your email cannot be used to add account if you receive the return. So see, even me have the problem. I have the problem. I cannot add account. I had the same problem, so I had to email uh, distance at Ryerson, uh -huh. and uh, they fixed it uh, from what they told me. So I have to check if it's fixed. Thank you so much. So I cannot. Okay. Demonstrate the SPSS, but I do have ambient statistics. I do want SPSS of class statistics. Okay, this I, I just did use, but why is it also giving this one here? So maybe I also need to email distance uh, to get it fixed. Uh, I hope to show you demonstration for SPSS when the problem is fixed. Uh, any other last minute question? We are running out of time today. Hey, it is coming up. It is coming up. This is my, I guess from IBM, <laughs> um, not from Ryerson. If it is running, we can maybe just few minutes. But why so slow? Um, so anyway, I will do SPSS at another time. Okay, uh, you may also wish to uh, lesson product. No, I didn't use the lessons. You may also need to use the YouTube Google to find out how do you get started with SPSS, okay? Uh, in summary, what we did today, we overviewed hypothesis test, we answered some student questions, and the last question, we actually go through the hypothesis test for a population mean, okay? And uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. I'll see you Thank next time. Thank you, Professor. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor.